Uh, on to the second spin of the day, Metalwork Colossus. All right, so this is the Blue White Metalwork Colossus deck. And the idea is the whole deck revolves around Metalwork Colossus. This is an 11 mana 1010. It costs X less, or X is your total mana value of non-creature artifacts. And you can sack two artifacts to return it from your graveyard to your hand. So the idea is you want to play all non-creature artifacts so that you can get this as cheap as possible. So we've got Portable Hole, Moon Snares Prototype, Glass Casket, Prophetic Prism, Wedding Invitation, Haunted Cloak, which gives it Vigilance, Trample, and Haste so we can get in with it. Uh, the Celestis, which is a mono rock and also kind of loots. Brass Knuckles is a four mana uh, equipment that gives double strike, but it copies itself when you cast it. So the copy also has a mana value of four. So this alone is eight off of Metalwork. And then four copies of Mightstone Weakstone. Then pretty stock blue white uh, mana base with Sanctum of Ugin, so that when you cast one of your Metalworks, you can go find the second Metalwork and play it immediately. Sideboard has Damping Sphere, Weathered Runestone, Metallic Rebuke, Karn for the grindy matchups, and Gigantha. Uh, you may be wondering, how do we play Gigantha if all of our lands are blue and white, and we play it via Prophetic Prism and the Celestis? So, let's jump into the second league of the day with blue-white Metalwork. Gigantha's condition is so easy, so many decks just randomly fill the condition. Yeah, that's why Gigant That's why the companion mechanic should just be routed away. Because the obviously problem ones are Lurus and Yorion, but then Gigantha and Kahira just wind up being free in a lot of decks. And then you even have the decks where we've seen decks that are able to play Karuga, we've seen decks that are able to play uh, Obosh, we've seen decks that are built around Garuda as the companion. And then like the worst one, and then Zerda also shows up sometimes. And then the worst ones are basically Loot Tree and Umori. But just get rid of the companion total. Just get rid of all of them. I feel like you put it well in your video about modern sucking. Why are we still pretending that companions are okay? Yeah, just errata, just errata the companion mechanic out of existence and then just unban the companions as usable cards in your regular main deck. All right, reveal Gigantha. We're on the play. We've got a Metalwork Colossus and multiple pieces of interaction, so I will keep this. All right, Sea Chrome, go. What are we playing against? Hopefully something that the portable holes are useful for. Looks like green. All right, portable holes are in fact useful. Ooh, Prophetic Prism? No, I just gotta hold that. Hole your elf. Pass the turn. Othanissa gets Nykthos. I wonder if Luris still gets banned in older formats if not a companion. I don't think so. I think it's fine. Like, obviously it's still good, but it's the, pr the problem is having it in your command zone every game for free. Just playing Haunted Cloak here because it's the most mana efficient play. So the Colossus is currently 7 mana. They play another Oath. They're all fair cards without Companion. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Yorion, uh, Lurus would be fine, powerful cards that are interesting to use if they didn't have Companions, Companion on them. Wolf Willow Haven. Okay, I'm going to hold the Wolf Willow. So let's play Prophetic Prism. Draw a card. All right. Portable Hole. Eat the Wolf Willow Haven. And play Sea Chrome Tapped. And pass. Cost Reduction is currently 7 on the Metalwork, so I can play it next turn. Opponent plays Kiora. Always yield to this. So gain life off Ven Venner's Fair. All right, so a darker. I guess I can hold this Oath of Nissa just to reduce their devotion, but that doesn't seem very good. All right, Metalwork. Equip here. Go to combat. I'm just going to swing at them. Or do I just swing at Kiora? Yeah, I'll just kill Kiora. You're still dead in the same number of turns, essentially. It just gets Kiora off the board. Every time. Here, here's my heuristic. Every time you're thinking of, should I attack them or their Planeswalker? And you're like, oh, I can attack them. I I've got them dead. Then And then you don't attack the Planeswalker, and then they just go crazy on value, and then you lose. It's like always a problem. So for example, there they could have just like untapped and cast Besage you, and then not killing Kiora is a huge problem. All right, so Damping Sphere shuts off Nykthos. Weathered Runestone stops Storm the Festival, and it stops Cavalier's uh, nonsense. And then Metallic Rebuke counters all their important stuff. So I want all of that. What do I not want? Portable Hole is incredibly important for dealing with the one mana elves. I feel like Prototype isn't actually important though. Like we don't need to race them. So I can get rid of Prototype. Wedding Invitation's probably pretty cuttable. And then what else? I probably just shave on stuff like one Knuckles. Mightstone Weakstone is not actually that great in this. Actually, hmm, let me think. Mightstone Weakstone's pretty bad in this matchup. It doesn't kill Cavalier. It doesn't really kill Old Growth Troll. So it only kills Pelucranos. Yeah, I can draw two cards off of it, but whatever. All right, let's cut two of these. Hmm. Let me just cut three of these. One of the Knuckles. Karnin. 
kind of tough because you do still need some amount of the cheap artifacts. One of the one of the other knuckles put wedding invitation back in. All right, let's do that. Submit. All right, game two on the draw. So reveal Giganta. All right, not a great hand, but we do have a glass casket to interact to some degree. So keep this. All right, turn one elf. All right, so just play Hallowed Fountain tapped and pass. All right, there's Pelucranos. So I guess I just casket the Pelucranos. Hit Pelucranos off the board. Nykthos. Oh, if they're attacking, that's great. That means they just don't have anything to do right now. Ooh, a Ganjo? Yeah, I'm not going to hold up a Ganjo, though. Let's play Prophetic Prism. Draw a card. Damping Sphere. Excellent. All right, pass the turn. So next turn, I can go Land, Wedding, Invitation, Damping Sphere. All right, Besaju. Killing our Glass Casket so they get Pelucranos back, which lets them untap with Nykthos Mana, which is really unfortunate. Oath of Nyssa. So they have five Devotion. They grabbed an, an other Elf. Plays a Besaju. Plays the other Elf. Mismatched Arts. Shame. Shame. Cavalier. Well, we can shut off their mana, but we can't, like, we're still just going to die to the beatdown plan here. Might stone weak stone to kill Pelucranos, but then they still have Nykthos. All right, so let's see. They don't have anything in their graveyard, so they'd have to top deck a bomb. Oh, wait, no, I can use the might stone to cast uh, Damping Sphere. Yeah, all right, so might stone weak stone, kill Pelucranos, and then cast Damping Sphere. All right, pass the turn. We are still getting beaten down pretty hard, though. We're dead in three turns. Well, they found another expensive card. Storm the Festival. Storm the Festival off the top. Okay, sure. Okay. Karn land. Yeah, we're gonna lose. What are they grabbing? They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Cityscape leveler. Then attack us, we go to nine. I can't activate Mightstone anymore. All right, wedding invitation. What am I drawing? Metallic rebuke. All right, a darker wastes. Put Gigant in my hand and then just go. Thoughts on Torch the Tower being added in Koldatha or Burn. Not in Pioneer, or not in uh, Modern. It's not good enough for Modern, but Pioneer maybe. Oh, they did have enough for Cityscape. Did I miscount? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah. Well, Damping Sphere. All right, well, rebuke that. Get out of here, Leveler. They still blow up our Damping Sphere, though. And they can still get Leveler back from the Graveyard. And they can still cast Storm from the Graveyard. So they take five from this. They can also Karn another thing. Woodcaller Automaton. All right, Damping Sphere again. But they do just have eight mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so Darker Waste. Oh, I can't activate Prophetic Prism, so I can't play Gigantha. All right, Damping Sphere, and then just go. I guess that's technically a misplay then, since I should have played Hallowed Fountain Tap, so Marble. All right, Woodcaller. Oh, we're just dead on board. We're at four, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, let me think. I still don't think Mightstone Weakstone is that good, so let's see. It's kind of a Knuckles, put Karn in. Maybe I'm just supposed to put all the Karns in and then cut that. All right, let's do that. Submit. On the play, reveal Gigantha. That is... Oh, man. It's so, so incredibly slow. We don't have anything to do until turn three. That's just not good enough. We have to be able to interact early or at least play an early artifact. We go turn one land, nothing. They go turn one land elf. Then we go turn two land, nothing. Then they play a three drop. And then we have Metallic Rebuke up. That's just a bit terrible. Like, other than being slow, though, it's a good hand. It's got Karn to start pumping Karn tokens out. It's got Metallic Rebuke to counter, like, Karn the Great Creator on their side. I can't just not keep hands just because they don't have Portable Hole in them. What's my progression of this hand? I can't play Metallic and Celestis the same turn. All right, let's mull. All right, keep this, put back what? One of the Prisms? It's Prism or Metalwork, so I guess that's Prism. Right, done. And play a land. <clears throat> Karn should have the Pithing Needle, non-mana abilities can't be stopped claws. Well, Karn shouldn't exist at all, but you know, yeah. I don't understand why, like, what does Stony Silence shut off mana abilities? Why are expensive cards like Ulamog able to kill lands? It's just absolutely miserable design. All right, Elf. So we can't play Prophetic Prism this turn because we have to kill it. So, Portable Hole. Play Land. Go. Wolf Willow Haven. I have to Portable Hole that. Please draw Land. Okay. Play this, and then play Prophetic. I guess I technically didn't need to do it in that order, but whatever, that's fine. All right, we've answered two of their ramp spells. Metalwork is minus four right now. Another land, Kiora. Doesn't matter, they just have more ramp spells. Yield to this, another Metalwork. So we have nothing else to do but just play Damping Sphere. So let's just play Damping Sphere and go. Metalwork is minus six, so we still can't play it. Karn, they just have all the lands into Karn. Yeah, all right. What do they get here? The Haywire Might's on the board, right? Needle. Why Needle? Untap a land for no real reason, because Damping Sphere is preventing you from playing anything that costs one. Nope. Can't do it. All right. Need to... Ugh. 
Doesn't target walkers. I have nothing else to do though. I guess I just run out casket for zero value so that I can have more reduction. Yeah, all right. Play glass casket, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can play a metalwork next turn. So they can just go get Haywire Might and then blow up Damping Sphere, right? So I do have to say, if you're trying to keep track of the misplays you make, marbling it up is a pretty good way to keep track. I've officially become a squirrel. All right, minus Karn, what are you getting? The Stone Brain. Ah, uh, so they can Stone Brain Metalwork Colossus and then we basically lose. Yep, we still we do have Karn in the deck, so we're not entirely dead. All right, Metalwork Colossus. We do get to redraw two cards, two lands. Needle. What are they gonna needle? I guess Inventor's there. Karn sign up. So we just lose on the spot now, right? Are we just straight up dead? I uh, get Gigantha, which we can't actually play. Are we actually just straight up dead? I took out all of the Moon Snares. So we have Odawara in play. So yeah, I think we're actually just dead. I can never cast Gigantha because I can't tap the Prophetic Prisms. I can't activate Karn. Odawara's in play. No, I guess I can Portable Hole or... Yeah, I can Portable Hole the Needle. So we're not dead. We're not completely dead. Although I've used two Portable Holes already, so it's not looking great. What'd they Oath for? They oath for another Karn. All right. There's the hole. I don't want to do it now, though, because I don't actually have a Karn. So let's just Might Stone draw two cards. All right, draw two. And pass. So the problem is they can just keep using Karn every single turn with no real downside. Cavalier. They draw a card. And now we're going to get beaten down by this. The Sage you in the graveyard. I basically have to draw Karn immediately. That's the only way I can do anything. I can also Inventor's Fair for something but I don't think anything I can administer for matters. All right, so we gain one here. Weathered Runestone. So I can go Runestone plus Portable Hold a Needle, and then Metallic Review. I don't want to Portable Hold a Needle now, though, right? Because they can just... They might just have another Besaiju, or they can just, like, Karn for Haywire Might and kill it, or Karn for Restorative Burst, get the Besaiju back from their graveyard. So I guess I just Weathered Runestone, and then just pass Holding Up Metallic Rebuke, and then just keep getting beaten down by these guys. I can always Inventor's Fair for the last hole, I suppose. But that's not great either. So, all right, pass the turn. Karn down tick. What are you getting? Cityscape Leveler. They have eight. They actually have eight mana. It's completely ridiculous. Oh, they can just activate this layer as well. So yeah, we have to draw Karn like the next turn. That's the only way we can possibly not lose. Even if we do and they just go get Leveler. Oh, Haywire Might, sure. So they're going to Haywire Might Damping Sphere. Yep. So they can make what? Four, five, six... Lucranos. They can actually pay for this. So they go Nykthos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pay three. They have three mana. Then they Nykthos untap. One, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Hydra becomes a nine or whatever. Like, you know, doesn't matter. I don't think taking them off of three mana here matters at all. <laughs> Another elf. Sure. So do they just make Lair the Hydra gigantic now? So yeah, Lair becomes huge. We take 20. I guess I have to... Oh, no, his Metal Fairs costs four to activate, right? Yeah. So, can't do that. Well, we drew a land, so we're dead. All right, on to round number two. There's another marble. All right, we're on the draw. Reveal Gigantha. This is acceptable, I think. Opponent also revealed Gigantha. Blood Crypt tapped. So, I'm assuming this is Rakdos Sack. All right, just play Hallowed Fountain tap to go. What are these marbles? Did I miss something? Well, yeah, earlier we spun Mouth Marbles. So now I have to put a marble in my mouth every time I lose or make a mistake. Blood Tithe. So Portable Hold of Blood Tithe. So eat that and then play Moon Snare and pass. Wow, that's why you sound different. Yep. And it's only going to get worse from here. Another Blood Tithe. All right, so let's see. Play the Celestis and then play Wedding Invitation. And then we'll draw a card off of that. Another land. Opponent also missed a land drop on their turn. So yeah, Rummage with the Blood Token. Discard Kroxa. Black Cleave Cliffs, which is oven, yeah, so it's definitely sack. All right, what is the conditions on this exactly? If it's night, three mana to flip the night and day, and whenever night and day flip, gain one loot. So let's see, I can glass casket this, and then I have one, two, three, four mana left over, and I can play Brass Knuckles. Okay, let's do that. So casket, eat the Blood Tithe, and then we'll just Witch's Oven to make a food. But it gets it off the field, at least. All right, so land, and then Celestis, tap this, play Knuckles. Trigger. What's the equip on this? One. All right. Three mana for Fable. Another land. Another land, eh? All right. So let's see. The only thing I can do is either Gigantha or Flip Day Night. If, even if I get Gigantha, I can't actually cast it, right? I have six mana available. 
So I should just Gigantha, put this in my hand, then play this tapped. No, I actually have exactly enough to... No, I don't, because Celestis has to tap to use the ability, so it's one, two, three. All right, so a darker waste, and then I didn't play anything, so it'll flip and I'll loot, and then I can flip loot again. So we're going to pass, and then it's going to flip to night, and we'll loot. And I'll just loot away Hallowed Fountain, I guess. All right, so trigger this. I would like to draw a card. I will discard Hallowed Fountain. So then their Fable goes off. Discard Black Cleave Fatal Push. This is looking like board states I had when trying this deck where you'd have everything except the Colossus. Yeah, but we have Inventor's Fair now, so we'll get there. Let's take two from the Shaman. Opponent plays Mayhem Devil. Yep. All right, why can I not activate the Day Knight on this? If it's night, it becomes day. Oh, you can't do it the other way around. Oh, it's activated as a sorcery. That's why. All right, so back to us. They only played one spell. Might Stone, Weak Stone. Excellent. So Inventor's Fair. And then it's probably more important to get Mayhem Devil off the board than anything else. Let's see. I can go Sack Inventor's Fair, one, two, three, four, get Colossus. And then I have, I can just play Colossus immediately, but I can't do anything with it. I also take one from the Devil, but that's probably fine. How much mana do I have exactly? One, two, three, four, five. That pays for Inventor's Fair. And then I've got one, two, three extra over here. So I take one from Mayhem Devil, and then they have one, two, three extra sacks that they can do. It's probably correct to just go grab Colossus. So Sack Inventor's Fair. Let's pay one here. Pay one, pay one, pay one. Mayhem Devil Trigger. Resolve the ability. Go grab Metalwork Colossus. Then Colossus is free to cast. And then I can equip it. May as well equip here. Why not? And then we just pass. So 10-10 Double Strike. And then I can make it... Uh, Sack Wedding Invitation to give it unblockable, although they do have foods, so they're not completely dead. They sack their treasure. They're casting Deadly Dispute, sacking something. Sacking the food token? Really? All right. So they can still instant speed oven to... Yeah, instant speed oven to make a food, but they do have to leave two mana open for that. Plays another Devil. Claim the Firstborn on Reflection, so they can now copy the Devil. I don't think I'm dead here though, right? Or am I? Three, six, nine, plus haste. I'm actually dead here. Well, that's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Another three. Then they can activate the oven. So we go to four, and they attack with everything. We only block one of them. We lose. Completely insane. Mayhem Devil also needs a ban, by the way. The total, the, the Pioneer bans need to be uh, Karn, Dig Through Time, Fable the Mirror Breaker, Mayhem Devil, Treasure Cruise, uh, Grease Fang. I think that's everything. All right, well, there's another marble. Oh, yeah, Lotus Field. Uh, let's see. Huh, what do I actually want here? I guess Weathered Runestone stops, what, the, the Cat and Kroxa. But I don't really care about those that much. What else? I think, I think just running this back as is is fine. Do I want Rebuke? Maybe I want Rebuke. Just to counter Fable and Mayhem Devil. So let's Rebuke in. I can cut, let's see, some Knuckles. Definitely want to keep Mightstone in. Can cut one of these and one of these. Actually, no, maybe I cut Prophetic Prism. Yeah, Prophetic Prism over Wedding Invitation. All right, let's run that. So on the play, Gigantha. Ah, oh, man, no no plays early. It's pretty rough. I don't think I can keep this. I go land, they go land and play like Oven or something, whatever they play. And then, we, and then I go land again, and if I haven't drawn anything, and then I just pass back and still do nothing, then they can play like Blood Tithe, then I have no answer to it. Maybe it's okay. Then I'm just spending my turn three holding up Retallic Rebuke to counter whatever they play. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna keep. I would never keep this on the draw. It's also pretty sketchy to keep it on the play, too, but... Phone almost to five. All right. All right. Fountain, go. Which is Oven. Yep. Another Metallic Rebuke. All right. Sea Chrome, go. Takanuma. Pass the turn. Huh. All right. A darker Wastes, go. End of turn, cast Deadly. Sacking this. All right. I'll definitely counter that. You don't draw two. You don't make a treasure. And you lose your Witch's Oven. Third land. Oh, there's the Devil. I guess I can Aganjo it. Never mind. We're going to Casket that. Casket your Devil. And then I get to hold up Metallic. Oven is fine. That can resolve. That will get countered. All right, what am I doing now? Another Brass Knuckles. So it's either that or play Gigant or put Gigantha in my hand. But let's just be mana efficient and do this. Fourth land. Tapped. Are they just going to put Gigantha in their hand? Yeah, Gigantha in their hand. All right. Well... At this point, I'm just going to play Haunted Cloak, so that if we draw Metalwork Colossus, I can just attach immediately and kill them. 
And then if they just play Gigantha, I just might stone to kill it. They sack it, make two foods, but what can you do? Or maybe just to draw cards, I don't know. Blood Tithe, rummage away. They rummage Gigantha out of their hand, huh? All right, I think Might Stone is actually better if I just draw cards. So let's do that. Draw two, all right, and then I can play Wedding Invitation to draw another card, another Might Stone. All right, so play Seachrome Coast, pass. Thought sees us, so they'll take the other Might Stone. Mayhem Devil, all right, well, we gotta find answers to this stuff soon. Draw a Metallic Rebuke. Man, we're just drawing nothing here, aren't we? So Sanctum. I actually basically can't even do anything. So let's add Gigantha to my hand. I can't even play it. I can play Brass Knuckles, Hodlip, and Metallic, I guess. Go blank, you know, counter that. So we take six here, go to 11. All right, time to draw something good or a land. <sighs> I, li I just can't actually do anything. Yeah, all right, play land, go. So we're dead in two hits. Fable, mm-hmm, six, seven, eight. Why are they not attacking with Blood Tithe? Draw. All right, Prophetic Prism, trigger. Ooh, Moon Snare? I can't, I don't have enough mana to do both, right? So I just have to play Gigantha and then just don't attack because I can't race this. I can't, this is lethal right here. So let's see. Yeah, I guess I just have to hope they don't find removal. Gigantha, tap this for red. Oh, I can use the Might Stone mana to pay for that. And then equip. So this can only pay for one of the Moon Snare prototype. So I may as well equip the double strike here. Oh, I have Vigilance? What grants Vigilance? Oh, this grants Vigilance. All right, so a combat attack with Gigantha. Swing, and pass to them. Hopefully they don't find removal or like a second Mayhem Devil or something. This card, two lands. Kroxa, sure. And they're gonna sack it to the Witch's Oven. And then I discard this. The Mayhem Devil shoots me, I go to seven. They didn't sack it to their Witch's Oven. Why not? Unlucky Witness, oh, because they're gonna sack that. They go to six, they make two foods and get whatever they're getting off of the Witness. They found Witness Thoughtseize, swing with everything. And then I actually lose from this position, insane. Because then they sack that, triggers the devil again, and then I can't block lethal. Yep. Man, these cards are dumb. All right, more marbles. Man, we've lost two games. All right, run three, marble. All right, so round number three with Metalwork Colossus, blue-white. Having uh, been playing two games with this deck already, I'm already seeing problems with it that I would fix if I were gonna play it again, but we'll discuss that at the end. All right, round three on the play, reveal Gigantha. Uh, we only have one land, so mold us. All right, this is fine. So what am I putting back? I guess one of the portable holes. I want double Colossus. All right, uh, land go. More Rakdos, excellent, thought sees. All right, so if I were them, I guess I would just take Prophetic Prism. Yep, there goes Prophetic Prism. All right, land, go. Bank Buster, sure, port that. Play Sanctum, go. All right, play Haunted Cloak, and go. Three mana at instant speed. What are they doing? Do they have KCOM? Wow, KCOM. All right, and Fable. All right, we're losing. We're just incredibly losing this. Land, get Gigantha. This card, two Fatal Pushes, mm-hmm. Draw a Bank Buster, play a land. Let me get hit with the token. So we need to draw a land immediately. All right, we didn't draw land immediately, so casket to eat the shaman and just go. So then this flip stomp us and then they can play bone crusher and copy it and haste it into us or just crew reckoner, whatever, same deal. Oh no, they can't copy because they just flipped reflection. Okay, that doesn't really help. I'm taking eight or more next turn. So minus five, six, seven, eight. I don't have enough to play Colossus. So just go activate bank buster to draw. So then they go copy Bone Crusher, we take eight. Mm hmm. Well, there's a land. So I'm gonna play Might Stone, Weak Stone 100%. So the only question is, what else am I doing? I go Might Stone, kill this, and then I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so Might Stone, Weak Stone, kill the Bone Crusher Giant. Maybe I'm supposed to kill Reflection? I don't know. Now kill Bone Crusher. What in the world do they have in response to this? Just activate Locked Wayne? Sure. Then play Colossus, trigger the Sanctums. I'd like to use the Sanctum to find another Colossus. I'd like to use the Sanctum to find another Colossus. All right, resolve this Colossus. Play another Colossus. Play another Colossus. How do I lose from this position? Equip to one of the Colossi. I guess this has Vigilance anyway, so attack. All right, I have three 10-10s ten -ten in play. Hopefully that should be good enough. Draw with the Bank Buster, make a pilot token. We won. All right, so let's see. Versus Rakdos Midrange, I probably want all the Karns and Rebukes. And I probably want none of the like random do nothing artifacts like Moon Snare. It's just going to be a grindy game. So 
How many things does Portable Hole hit? It hits Blood Tithe, Goblin Shaman Tokens, Bank Buster. That's probably enough things that it hits. I think I probably just don't play any of the Brass Knuckles because they just don't do anything without car without uh, Metalwork. Maybe one is okay and then cut Haunted Cloak because those are the most do nothing out of all the artifacts. All right, let's cut all of those and submit. Reveal Giganta. All right, this is fine. We have two lands and a bunch of draw, draw rocks. Black Cleave. Thoughtseize. I don't even know what they take here. Do they just take Might Stone? Because it's like the only unique thing in our hand. Yeah, Might Stone, Weak Stone. We drew another Colossus, so play Sea Chrome Pass. Croaksa. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just discard one of my Metalwork Colossi now. Another Prophetic Prism. All right. Prophetic. Trigger. Draw card. It's a third land. That's good. When it plays Graveyard Trespasser, Exiles our Metalwork. Oh well. What can you do? Portable Hole, which doesn't hit that, so Prophetic, and then I just hold up Metallic Rebuke. All right, here comes the Trespasser. Eat another thing out of our graveyard, sure. We take three, go to 16. All right, yeah, I'll counter that. What is going on? Blue, colorless, colorless. Pay one, pay one, blue. All right, um, Wedding Invitation, trigger to draw. Celestis, which I can't play yet. What's the math on this? I have six here, so this is seven. So then next turn, 6, 10, I can play Metalwork next turn if I just play Celestis. So I don't need to play the hole, so let's just pass. Another land, Thoughtseize. Well, now they're going to take our Colossus. I guess I just have to sack two of these things to get this back so they can't get rid of it, unfortunately. So then activate sacking this and this. Let me go to 12. All right, so play the Celestis. Activating Loctoin, sure. Then play Hole or uh, Prism, trigger to draw. Another Colossus, but we can't play it yet, so we'll just pass to them. They look like they're getting kind of flooded. Shieldred, yep. Exiling another thing. So we go to nine, then we go to seven from Shieldred. Karn. All right, let me think. So Colossuses are currently minus seven. So if I play Cloak, I can play two of them, but I can't equip. So what I need to do is I need to just play Hole on nothing, right? Play Hole on nothing, play double Colossus, equip one of them. All right, that's what I'm doing. So play Hole on Nothing, then play Colossus for free, play Colossus for free, equip one of them, go to combat, swing. I guess they can trade with Shieldred though, right? I guess I'm fine if they trade with Shieldred. Yeah, I could have activated Wedding Invitation to make it unblockable, but it's fine if they trade. All right, they trade. All right, back to us, or back to them. If they attack, I will bring it back by sacking Hole Prism. Go blank. So it doesn't matter what I do, because I'm going to have to discard anyway. So sure, go blank. What's the last card in their hand? It is a land that they're going to use to activate Lockdwayne. Why? You're dead on board. I just equip here and then attack. Oh, they can escape Kroxa. All right. Well, so yeah, we just equip Haunted Cloak. They have to block. So, hmm. So I go Cloak, attack. They actually can just chump block with Trespasser. And then I can use Celestis to flip it to Knight to try to draw a card that doesn't make me lose to Kroxa. If I do this now... I guess it doesn't matter. Like if I flip it to Knight, they still have to block with this anyway, but then they can double block to trade. So yeah, I don't do it pre-combat. Oh no, I could just make my guy unblockable, right? Yeah. So tower creature can't be blocked. Yeah. Just overthinking this. Combat. Swing. All right. We won against Arakdos midrange. On to round number four. So on the play, we get Giganta. All right, this hand's fine. Keep this. We've got interaction and a curve. So see Chrome, go ahead. Planes. Hopeful initiate. All right, so we're just going to shoot that. I guess, hmm, so they train that to get rid of our stuff, so I probably do just need to kill that. The alternative is, like, not doing it in case they play Thalia or something, but we'd have to deal with it anyway regardless. All right, Copper Coat, sure. All right, let's just be money efficient, play Cloak, go. Dauntless Bodyguard. All right, take two from Copper Coat Vanguard. Another one drop. Ooh, there's Metal Work. Do we have enough? I go Brass Knuckles. I have enough? Yeah, so let me think about this. I go Brass Knuckles, but then I can't equip it. So if I do that and then they just have Brutal Cathar on their turn, then they just Brutal Cathar Metalwork. So it's probably better to just not play the Colossus and then play it next turn when we can give it 20-20 immediately. So Brass Knuckles. Yeah, so let's just pass here and then we'll do it next turn. Because then I can just go Wedding Invitation, Colossus for free, double equip, make it unblockable, kill you. So when it plays Hopeful Initiate, back to us. All right, so Wedding Invitation. Well, I guess I could have gotten the second one, right? Yeah. Regardless, this is going to win. So I'm going to go Colossus, Trigger, grab another Colossus, resolve this one, Colossus number two, clip here, clip here, 
unblockable combat attack. All right, beat humans, game one. So game two, I don't think I actually bring anything in. The only thing I could really think is what? Is Metallic Rebuke and Karn good? Is it better than Brass Knuckles? Maybe. It actually probably is. We are racing them. So let's see. This can maybe counter their stuff. I'm not entirely sure though. This can maybe provide blockers. They're going to leave Brutal Cathar in. So the tokens are much less useful. Maybe I just bring this in. These are also bad against Thalia, but what can you do? The whole deck's bad against Thalia. I think I just do that. All right, submit. All right, this is good. We got turn one, turn two, glass casket, redraws, keep this. Helpful initiate. All right, so sea chrome, play moon snare, and go. So then we probably have to casket this. If they play copper coat, then we can't. Tomic. Lands on the battlefield and in graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponent's control. Your opponent can't play lands from the graveyard. Um, why did they bring this in? Okay. Do I just kill this thing since it's the more powerful creature? No, I just gotta kill Hopeful, right? Because they'll eventually just find ways to train it and put counters on it, and then they'll start blowing our stuff up. I'm actually not in a rush to do either one. Now, I guess they train it next turn, so I should definitely kill one of them. Yeah, let's just get rid of Hopeful. Why did they, why did they bring in Tomic? I do not understand that one. This stops my ability to do nothing. Like, it doesn't do anything to me. All right, well, there's Adeline. Maybe I should have saved this. I can portable hold that. Still have to deal with Adeline. So let's go this one. Play Prism. I guess play Wedding Invitation. Nightstone, Weak Stone. All right. Portable hole. Target Tomic. And then pass. And then I can play Nightstone, Weak Stone next turn to kill Adeline off. Fourth land. Lieutenant. Tomic is a 2-3 flying human for two mana. It screws up things and gets mono green. Now I understand like why it's in their list. Why it's in their 75. I'm asking like why did they bring it in? Unless it's in their main deck, and they just didn't have anything better to take out. All right, so we're taking a lot of damage here. Yield to this. All right, so Might Stone, Weak Stone, kill Adeline, then play Prophetic Prism off of this mana. Colossus, what a draw. Use the ability, go grab a second Colossus. This is Colossus Resolves. Play another Colossus, and pass the turn. Fifth land, ossify one of them, sure. One more card in hand, what do they got? They're going to attack, eh? All right, well, I'll block Lieutenant. All right, we're at six. Second main. Extraction Specialist to get Thalia's Lieutenant back. Okay. Maximum Punished. All right. Italic Rebuke. So if they attack here, we block this and we don't die. So first of all, let's just play Prophetic Prism. Actually, cancel that. I can play Gigantha here, right? I can go two, three. No, I'm too much. I have too many. Uh, I don't have enough to do it. I have six mana if I shock. Seven mana. Someone short of doing it. All right, so let's just play Prophetic Prism then. Celestus. Okay. So let's play Celestus. Play this tapped. And then I guess just pass with Metallic Rebuke open. So they can attack here. I block the Extraction Specialist. I take five, go to two. Yeah. So block here. And then every creature's lethal. Well, this isn't lethal, but these two are lethal. All right. This flips over. So let's stack this. Gain a life off the Inventor's Fair. And then I would definitely like to use that ability. All right. Let's loot away a land or not. At this point, Metallic Rebuke can't actually counter anything in their deck because they have six lands, so let's just get rid of Metallic Rebuke. All right, so I can Inventor's Fair for another Colossus. I can also... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can play Gigantha. I don't want to get rid of my Inventor's Fair because it's gaining me life. So let's see. Let's just grab Gigantha and then play land, play Gigantha, filter this into green... And then we just pass with two blockers. Mutabolt off the top. Okay. So gain more life with the fair. Another fair. So now I'm much more tempted to use this. So first of all, let's just wedding invitation to see what we draw. So trigger, drew brass knuckles. All right. So let me see. I'm still not in a position where I can just attack them without worry though. But I can use wedding invitation. So I can go knuckles, equip to metalwork, make both of these guys unblockable, deal 25. All right, Knuckles. Clip here, then Wedding Invitation. You can't block this, and you can't block Gigantha. We beat humans with the Colossus. All right, play the final round of the league. We're on the play. Reveal Gigantha. Two lands, redraws, portable hole. We just need a third land to have Celestus. All right, keep. All right, land, go. Planes. All right, humans again. Very well. Um, It's more important for me to find lands. So I think I'm supposed to play Wedding Invitation now so I can go third land Celestis plus hole next turn. All right, well, there's metal work. So pass the turn. 
Thalia, that's a really big problem. So I'm glad I didn't play my hole on that. Still missing, still missing a third land, unfortunately. All right, eat Thalia, and then pass back to them. Copper Coat, taken three. Ugh, we can't play anything. All right, pass it back to the opponent. Another Thalia, so even if we draw a land, we still can't play anything. We still didn't draw a land. This is eight damage, so even if I play this, I still lose. Yep, just got Mana Spirit out of that game. All right, same deal. I think I just switch these around. It's also very probable that I should just be playing Karns in the deck. Let's see. Karn, Karn. These are pretty bad, actually. Let's try that. All right, Gigantha. I have a bunch of lands. I have some stuff. All right, keep this. Play this tapped and go. Turn one, recruit on the host, sir. All right, so I'm more likely to want to channel that. So let's play this. Another land. All right, pass the opponent. Well, there's Thalia. So I guess I'm going to spend my turn channeling a Gonjo. Land. Yep, I'm just going to spend my whole turn at Ganja Thalia. Third land. Opponent plays Copper Coat. Oh my god, really? So now I can't even channel this? And I can't... I guess I can rebuke this, right? Yeah, okay, so... Rebuke, blue, this one, pay that, and another color. All right, rebuke Copper Coat. So we take... All right, so... Hopefully in issue, we take four from that. I'm just not doing anything with Thalia in play, so... If I just play a Wedding Invitation, then I only have one one after that, and then I, just, I can't even do anything, then I'm taking six next turn. I can't even get up to the Might Stone. I'm so far away from Metalwork Colossus. It's only good if I find a land, then I can play Karn and make a Karnstruct. That might be better than just channeling to kill this. Hmm... It's just a gamble no matter which way I do it. I think I'm just supposed to try to kill Thalia, so let's pass again. All right, swing, let's kill that. So we take four, go to ten. They have no follow-up? Do they have Wandering Emperor or something? Hmm. All right, Wedding Invitation, draw a card. I unfortunately have to shock this in. So shock that in, play another Wedding Invitation. Draw a card. It's a Sea Chrome Coast, extra, unfortunately. So pass to them. They just didn't have anything. They didn't even activate Recruitment Officer. What the heck? All right, you go to four, and just pass back to us again, eh? So I guess I just play Karn and make a token. Make a token. Play land, go. So they just ossify the token and we die. Yep. Well, that's another marble. So unfortunate. So I think that this deck is fundamentally misbuilt. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's a bunch of things that I don't like about it. So Moonsnare prototype as basically it's like two mont. I think essentially the idea of I need my Metalwork Colossus to be free or cheap. Therefore, I'm going to play all these artifacts that barely do anything. I think is just the wrong tack to take. Like the Moon Snare prototypes, the Brass Knuckles, which are only good once you already have the Metalwork down. Like if you have Brass Knuckles in your hand, but you don't have Metalwork, then they suck. Having all three of these, I mean, these are legendary. So if you draw the second copy, they're useless. It's The second copy is useless. And basically the whole deck revolves around just playing the Metalwork, but there's not actually that many good ways of finding it. It's basically just hope you draw it or get to Inventor's Fair to go fetch it. So I think, I think the deck wants to like cut all of this like a lot of these do-nothing artifacts and just play other threats. So, like this deck would love to play Sky Sovereign, for example. Sky Sovereign would be right here. And then uh, other things is stuff like if you're already going to play four copies of Mightstone Weakstone, why not just throw Urza in here so it can merge with it? And the Urza is also good for reducing the costs of all of the artifacts in the deck. So I think that you could make a bunch of changes. I also think that like Karn the Great Creator should just be in here. You're already a deck that is built around playing a bunch of artifacts, and Karn is really good for tutoring up silver bullets from the sideboard. When you're just flooding out in late games and you don't have anything to do, Karn can go grab like Cityscape Leveler out of your board and other stuff like that. So I think you just want to cut like most of this do-nothing stuff and play more actual threats and cards that have advantages. Another thing is this deck is incredibly mana-hungry. You basically never ever want to miss a land drop and only playing 22 lands is too few lands. I saw a Simic-based version of this that used Essica's Chariot and some other threats to not be all in on Metal War. Yeah, I think you should be playing like Essica's Chariot, Sky Sovereign, just artifacts that are also threats that can make Metal Work viable and not all of this garbage. Like, I would much rather have Essica's Chariot on four over Brass Knuckles. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this league with the Metal War Colossus deck. The marbles are freaking killing me. But we still got another league to go. So let's take a break. And we'll come back with third deck of the day. So stay tuned. 
Oh god, no, you have to keep the marbles for the next league too. I have to keep the marbles until I finish the stream today. So however long I'm streaming, I have to keep the marbles.